The Public School by H. L. Minken From The Smart Set, March 1921 Education, in the highest and rarest sense, education directed towards awakening a capacity to differentiate between fact and appearance, is, and always will be, a more or less furtive and illicit thing, for its chief purpose is the controversion and destruction of the very ideas that the majority of men, and particularly the majority of official and powerful men, regard as incontrovertibly true. To the extent that I am genuinely educated, I am suspicious of all the things that the average citizen believes, and the average pedagogue teaches. Progress consists precisely in attacking and disposing of these ordinary beliefs. It is thus opposed to education, as the thing is now managed, and so there should be no surprise in the fact that the generality of pedagogues in the public schools, like the generality of policemen and saloon keepers, are bitter enemies to all new ideas. Think of what the average American schoolboy is taught today, say of history or economics. Examine the specific orders to teachers issued from time to time by the school board of New York City, a body fairly representative of the forces that must always control education at the cost of the state. Surely no sane man would argue that the assimilation of such a mess of evasions and mendacities will make the boy of today a well-informed and quick-minded citizen tomorrow, alert to error and weary of propaganda. This plain fact is that education is itself a form of propaganda, a deliberate scheme to outfit the pupil not with the capacity to weigh ideas, but with a simple appetite for gulping ideas ready-made. The aim to make good citizens, which is to say docile and uninquisitive citizens. Let a teacher let fall the slightest hint to his pupils, that there is a body of doctrine opposed to the doctrine he is officially ordered to teach, and at once he is robbed of his livelihood and exposed to slander and persecution. The tendency grows wider as the field of education is widened. The pedagogue of Emerson's day was more or less a free agent, at all events in everything save theology. Today his successor is a rubber stamp, with all the talent for trembling at his constituent gutta percha. In the lower schools, the thing goes even further. Here, the teachers are not only compelled to stick to their textbooks, but also to pledge their professional honor to a vast and shifting mass of transient doctrines. Any teacher who sought to give his pupils a rational view of the late Woodrow Wilson at the time Woodrow was stalking the land in the purloined chemise of Moses, would have been dismissed from his pulpit and probably jailed. The effects of such education are already distressingly visible in the Republic. Americans, in the days when their education stopped with the three R's, were a self-reliant, cynical, liberty-loving, and extremely rambunctious people. Today, with pedagogy standardized and schoolhouses everywhere, they are the herd of sheep.